always good to be back in the house of the Lord again. Say that. It's always good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, whether we're uh, having a service or we just come over to uh, uh, look around, see if anything needs to be done, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. This morning we want to go to the book of Matthew. We want you to turn to chapter 21. And we want to go to. I'm just undecided, but I think we'll go to 20, 23. Page chapter 23. I mean, verse 23. Let me, uh, let me say something before we start here. I, uh, I'm going to change my mind just a little bit. And look at verse 20 of 17. If you would, I want to say something this morning concerning the uh, the uh, fig tree. Uh, I've read it, and uh, there's there's some things here that uh, I'm sure that everybody knows, but uh, there might be someone here that doesn't, and uh, and it might bring back some remembrance. But in chapter uh, verse six, I'm 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 I'm, I'm sorry, how I'm doing this. Verse uh, chapter twenty one, verse seventeen. Instead of yeah, I, I said chapter seventeen. I mean verse. 17 instead of 23. Sorry about that. All right, everybody ready? And he left them and went out of the city of Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves. Only, and he said unto it, Let no fruit grow in it henceforth forever. Now, what I wanted to show you was this morning in some of the notes in, that I've been reading in this, in this, the fig tree, the fig tree's fruit generally appears in February, followed followed by the leaves. Now, the the fruit tree come it, it don't bear leaves and then bloom and then figs but the figs come first all right so here's the thing which are not formed until late spring that's the leaves so there should normally have been some fruit on the tree and now he's talking about the nation of israel and he said should have been some fruit in israel but here he says the fig tree was often used as a symbol of the nation of israel and you can find uh, that in Joel uh, 1 7 and uh, Hosea 9 10, if you wanted to look it up sometime. And when Jesus literally came upon a barren tree, uh, upon a barren fig tree, he used the incident to fully, almost immediately wither, uh, he used the uh, incident to fully illustrate Israel's de 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 desperation, desperate condition. Mm -hmm. The curse, let not fruit grow forever, results in almost immediately withering of the tree. While the tree was normal, they, they like all of nature, are subject to the word of Christ. The disciples marvel at that, how that this could happen so fast. And so this morning, when Jesus, when we see this this morning, Jesus is coming out of, uh, out of, uh, being uh, sleeping all night and he's hungry and he has a need and Israel Israel was the uh, the apple of his eye mm -hmm. and he was depending upon Israel now we know this morning that Israel failed the Lord Jesus Christ right but here's the thing of it we took their place the Gentile took their place and this morning when when the need arises for anything that the Lord Jesus Christ needs and he comes to us, listen, we need to understand what is going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this morning, through the Holy Spirit, he can speak to our hearts and our, and, and our soul and, and talk to us and tell us. And so we need to be very mindful this morning as the world is getting worse and worse and worse. That and and I know when I say this, the needs of Jesus, he 
He don't have to have a need for anything because he's the master of all. But listen, when the time comes for us to be a witness, to be uh, a, a, some help to someone in this trouble, trouble, trouble time, it'll be like this right here, where there was no fruit in Israel. The tree was barren, it had leaves on it, but no fruit. And so the thing of it is here, he says here, that they uh, let no fruit grow on it forever. And so we as God's people, I'm going to tell you this morning, this nation of ours is getting less and less and less fruit on the fig tree. Amen. And so we need to, every opportunity that we get, we need to fertilize that tree in some way, encourage someone Amen. that the tree may grow and produce more fruit and be a show to this world. Because, hey, we are the light of the world, right. according to what Jesus said. And if we don't shine our light into this world and encourage people, it won't happen. Right. Because you and I know both what is all around us and what is bombarding us and what is trying to overrun us and to cut us out. And so <clears throat> we need to this morning help ourselves by being a help to others and a, and a, and a, and a help for the, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's why I wanted to read that this morning. But notice here, he says here, <clears throat> let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Now that that happened, and it's still it's still there. Now one day, one day Jesus is going to come back to the gen, to the Jew, and they are going to start producing fruit. And listen, they're going to have uh, a group of people that's going to go out in all the world, and they're going to be preaching and preaching the gospel, and then probably be, be killed and everything. But he says, and presently the fig tree withered away, and so. That is Israel today. It's in a withered condition with no fruit. Of that, it's that is a, it, it has fruit, but it's not that plentiful. And so, and when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, "How soon is the fig tree withered away?" And Jesus answered and said unto them, "Verily, verily, God, or verily, I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not." You shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if he shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now, Amen. the mountain here, I see the mountain <clears throat> that is hindering us right now is the people, the rioters, the sin that's all in the world. And listen, he, Jesus says here, if we have faith and if we pray about this thing, listen, we we can we can push this stuff back. And so that's it's our place this morning to when we come to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ and when we pray, it's it's our it's our privilege and we should desire it to see these people push back and to get back out of the way where they Amen. Really belong and for that we can spend our life in peace and for that we can tell the world about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that, this morning, and, and we watch a, a program uh, down, it comes out of that, it's someplace in Texas, and this, this church is buku people in it. But they have decided they're going to close them down, and they're fighting against that. And listen, they're going to court about it and all of this stuff. And so listen, we may have to. Right. We may have to go before Judge Andy Brigham, or we may have to go before uh, somebody else out here. But listen, we need to, to be ready to take that stand. Amen. Because that's it's, 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 it's what God wants us to do. And so here, he's talking about the mountain. And he says, he says, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now, I don't know, he's, he's you see sometimes as people or it may be a, a, some other way of destroying it. But listen, what, what, is, what he's saying is that you can get there get them away from you and and, 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 reach some, and and have some peace in And so in verse 22, and all things whatsoever shall ask, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing 
Do it in faith and believe it's going to happen. And don't look for it to happen just a minute it comes out of your mouth. But listen, believing you shall receive. Amen. And so, like I say, God works in mysterious ways. And listen, he does. He, he listens to what we have to say. And if you don't believe that, then listen, you need to get your heart tuned up a little bit because he has Jesus Christ sitting there by his side. And Jesus Christ is all times listening to Amen. our prayers. And he, when he said to us, when we pray, pray in the name of Jesus. And he said, our Father, which are in heaven. And there's where he is. And he is there beside the of the Father. And we pray to him. And he makes intercession for us. And he says, here's the prayer today. Here's the prayer today. And if you see enough of these, hey, push this mountain out of the way. Push this mountain out of the way. He's going to act on it. Amen. So I, I, I'm a full believer in this. Now, back now in verse 23. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Now, uh, Jesus could have given them an answer, but he knew what they would do if he did because listen they wanted to kill him they hated him and they wanted to put him down in every way they could and so when when he come when they were when he would have come forth with an answer and we're going to read that just in a minute but when he, if he would have come forth with an answer they would have put him down but instead listen he asked them a question by right. answering their question and he said and jesus answered and said unto them i also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I am likewise to tell you by what authority I do these things. So he's told them how that they can get their answer from him. And so here's the here's the question. The baptism of John, whence was it from heaven or from men? Well, they knew, and Herod, you remember when Herod was having his little feast at his wedding feast, and uh, he was afraid of John the Baptist. He was scared to death of him. And of course, he knew the people followed John the Baptist and he was scared to death, but anyway, he had him killed. And he says here, uh, the baptism of John the Baptist. Whence was it from heaven or, or men? And they reasoned within themselves saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did you not then believe on him? And even at this incident where the John was killed by the king, they would have stopped it or they would have protested against it. But no, they were all for it. Now, and it says here, but if we shall say of men, we fear the people. For all hold John as a prophet. And so that's confirming what he, they were, the scriptures that told about him killing John. So, and they answered Jesus and said, we cannot tell. They were scared of the people. And if they said the other way, then he's going to come back with another question and, and put them down. And so they, their, their belief would have, would have went out the window. So here he says, we cannot tell. And he said unto them, neither tell I you by what authority I do these, these things. Amen. I want you to turn, if you would, to John, John 5. In verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Amen. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And so we see here this morning, in John's writing, here is the authority. The authority comes directly from his Father God, and he gave him all of these, uh, gave him all of this power, and he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that 
heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death into life and so that Amen. authority that authority that he's telling us this morning you can put your you can put your mind at ease because it's true and he has the authority to tell the the apostles and the, and the writers to write this in he's got that authority and listen you the devil will come to you sometimes and tell you uh all oh, that's 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 not right he's uh he he's he's not he's not in heaven he's this and he's that but listen you by faith can believe god's word mm -hmm. it's true and listen if there's anything in this world that you can build anything on it's god's word it's Amen. a solid rock and that's the truth and so this morning think upon that as as we uh, are still reading but we won't read some more but listen don't let the devil get into you and and stir you and convince you because hate will come at the weakest point in your life you have worries on top of worries as it, it even even as you flip that button on the tv Right. And listen, I, I told Diane this morning, I said, I should not have even turned it on because there's nothing on there this morning that I need to see because it, all it does is just stirs me up and makes me uh, so angry sometimes. And so, listen, the best thing to do is leave Satan's work alone and don't look on it don't because it is Satan's work that's going right. out there this morning. And so here, here is some of the things that that he uh, has said, and so uh, in uh, verse 28, notice here, but what, in, in 21, 28, but what think ye, a certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. And you know, that this morning sometimes with us is that we, uh, we have to be coached by the Holy Spirit sometimes. Amen. We, 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 we have to see the, the both sides of a picture when, when even in a message of uh, preaching or, uh, uh, or whatever. And we have these two two things, and we, we have to make a decision. Sometimes we look at it and say, well, it won't make no difference. If the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts and says, you need to do this or you need to do that, we ponder it, and here comes Satan. And he get, puts his two cents worth in. And sometimes we say, well, it won't make no difference. I can't see it makes any difference. Well, most certainly you can't right. because you have a fleshly eye. You have Amen. a sinful life. But in, on the other hand, the Holy Spirit comes along and encourages you and says this and says that, and you have a heart change. You see, and you say, oh, like I, I, I want to go to church Sunday. Well, you know, I, I said, that hey, you're coming in on me. Well, you know, when the Holy Spirit gets through talking to you, <laughs> you see a need for it. Amen. You see a need for it, people, and uh, and I'm telling you this morning, uh, you need to listen to that because that's the same way with this this son here. He said, "No, I'm not going," and he, he was told to his father. But now notice here, he said, he answered, and said, "I will not." But afterward, he repented or changed, had a heart change of mind, and went. And he came to the second uh, second and said, "Likewise." And he answered and said, I go, sir. Very, very pleasing. Very, the, the, the father was very confident in it. And he just knew he was going. But notice, and went not. Mm -hmm. And so here, here is a thing that, that we need to consider all. Consider anything, anytime we have a choice, consider, consider these things. What is God's will for me to do? And mm -hmm. I don't mean... I go get a drink of water or, or not get a drink of water. But I'm talking about things that pertain to how you can uh, be a uh, blessing to someone or how that you can uh, comfort someone or how that you can serve the Lord in a great way. You need, we, need, we need to really ponder these things and think because, listen, if you'll wait just a little while, 
the Holy Spirit will speak to your soul. Amen. And he will. And listen, if you're if you're truly want 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 what He's got for you, just be calm and be and don't make no quick decision because I'm telling you what, uh, a quick decision is the worst decision in the world. Amen. You need to ponder this thing. So, but anyway, and he can uh, and in verse thirty one, whether the twain did the will of his father, and they said unto him the first, Jesus said unto them. Verily I say unto you that the publicans, the tax payers or the tax receivers, and the harlots uh, go into the kingdom of God before you. And so he, 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 he's telling them some stuff here. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publican and the harlot believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, Repented not after afterward that you might believe. And so he's saying here this morning to the Jews, hey, listen, you seen this happen with the with the publicans and they hated the publicans and the and the harlots were, were uh, in sin. But when they heard the word, they repented. But and 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 after they had seen them repent. They didn't do anything about it, but just went on their merry way. And so this is this is some of the things that we need to consider this morning. And I and I, I want to I want to read you something in in First Corinthians if I can get there this morning in chapter five. First Corinthians five and nineteen. Notice what it says about authority. <clears throat> what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God and ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your bodies and in your spirit, which are a God. And I wanted to read something else. Uh, and uh, uh, would you let me just bear with me just a minute? I'm going to read something else. And John. John. Uh, first Corinthians. Uh, uh, first Corinthians 5 4. Okay. Okay, here it is. First Corinthians 5 4. I'm sorry. I'm messing up. For uh, in verse 4, in the same, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such a one. Now, this is. I'm talking about authority, and this is the church's authority to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, not for the soul, but for the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. No. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, and ye may be a new lump. As ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is, sac is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And this morning, uh, there is a uh, uh, a, uh, a scripture over there about the leavening and the leavening it describes a woman took three measures of meal and put this leavening in it and she stirred it and she stirred it and she stirred it and it got all the meal mixed with this leaven or flour whatever and listen it's the same way here this morning with this leavening here when he's talking about the leavening he says uh, purge out therefore the old leaven and that's what they did. They would put this this yeast, this leaven, in, in this meal, 
and let it set up for three or four days and, and it would go through the whole thing of course it would cause it to rise well that's the same thing that happens to a church when it's Lebanon or when sin has entered in and listen he's talking about one that was was out there doing sin and you need to get him out of it out of the way and let Satan uh, take care of his flesh because listen that sin will spread in this building in this church mm -hmm. in any any church it will it will it will spread and right. listen, the first thing you know you're going to be on the same side with the one that they try to get out of the church and so we need this morning we need to understand this thing about Lebanon I wanted to read you something else if I could find it I think it was in John 5 I read that in John 5 19 but there was another one I wanted to read to you but anyway here's the thing if you would turn to, and this is the last thing I want to read in Matthew 20 I'm going to run it around Matthew 5 20 Chapter 20 and verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire labor unto his bed. Now this is this is this is a scene, and these all of these people are standing around waiting for a job. And this this big farmer, he's got fields of of of, of uh, stuff to, to uh, uh, vendors to, to, to work in. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. Now listen to this. Whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way in about... Again, he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why stand you here all, all the way? They idle. And they said, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. And I want to say this, and, 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 and as I was reading this, I see, I see, I see a, a, a story here that it is showing our Lord Jesus Christ. And as he comes to us and he says, go into my vineyard. And he may be, it may be a young person, it may be an old person, but he says, I will give you salvation. Mm -hmm. That is the penny a day. That's the penny. And of course, that was just an ordinary payment for a day's work in the vineyard. And so, each one of these that he comes on down to and as he sees after her that is wanting a job, is wanting salvation, and they're standing there all idle all day long, and he says, no man is hard. Listen, he has mercy on us in the last days of our life, people. Amen. He does. And listen, he calls us. He calls us through our, some at age 10, some through age 90, or whatever. But listen, that's the picture here that I see in this. And he says, he says to them, you go work in my field. You serve me and I'll give you what is right. Amen. And so this is something this morning that so many people don't understand. But listen, the thing about it is when they receive the, the and, 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 and another thing that he said to them, he said, you pay the the last first. The one that la that worked the one hour, he got paid first, and they he gave him a penny. So these guys over here that worked the 10, 11 hours, oh boy, they couldn't hardly wait to get up there because and then he gave them a penny too. Mm -hmm. And here's here's the thing of it. God, God doesn't does look upon uh, the work that we do and, 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 and say, well, uh, you're going to have this, you're going to have, I, I mean, I understand rewards. 
But the thing of it is, we, we, we are, we're working, we're serving a just God. Mm -hmm. And he this morning uh, understands, and listen, some people, some people have to wait for him to come out and ask them, do you want a job? Do you want to work in my vineyard? They have to wait a while. Some, it's not as long. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, God knows who he's going to call and right. what hour and what day. And listen, the payment, the one that stands up here and get and, and done this all his life, listen, the only thing that he can, the, his payment is, oh, I'm so glad that I, I'm in heaven and I can serve the Lord some more. But these here, and of course it, it, it shows the flesh, mm -hmm. they murmur, they murmur because that these guys that work one hour got uh, the same as they did. And, and of course Jesus said to them, hey, it's my money, or it's mm -hmm. my pay. I can do with it what I want to. And it's the same way with our salvation. He gave, he gave us salvation. He, he saved our souls. And listen, we're supposed to work for him if it's 50 years or if it's five years or if it's three days. We're supposed to, to do it with love and listen when we stand before him and hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. But also, another thing that I see in this, those that got paid for the, for the last hour got their money first or their reward first. They got to see these others that work more hours and they got to be uh, seeing that what they had done, they didn't get any more money out of it, but they got to see the glory of God and the love of God. And also these that worked for the whole, the whole 11 hours, listen, they, they had a, a blessing there. Mm -hmm. They had a blessing and, and but they didn't realize it was there. They had a blessing, but listen, they didn't, they didn't understand it. So, but this is, this is one thing I'm talking about another. But listen, this thing about, don't, don't get tired. <laughs> don't get tired of working for God. Amen. Because listen, he knows every, everything that you've done, every thought you've had, and he didn't choose you by mistake when you was 15, or he didn't choose you by mistake when you were 90. Listen, he knows what he's doing, and what he does is right, and what you get, you need to enjoy, and what you need to get, and what you get, you need to thank the Lord for it, and praise his holy name, because Amen. It, it's that way, people. He, he is, and, and, and I've heard this call, he's the Lord of the woods. Listen, he does what he wants to, and Amen. Jesus, Jesus, is they're making intercessions for us and he's the one that uh, uh, tells God about us and all this and so uh, we this morning ought to be happy that we're able to I am Amen. I'm 81 years old and I'm happy that I've been able to do this all these years and, and I, I I heard sometimes for those that the Lord has not come out and said that you want my vineyard yet I, 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 but the thing of it is there's still work to be done. Because if it wasn't, I'd be gone and everybody else would be gone. But there's work to be done. And so don't get discouraged uh, if the Lord has not called you and if the Lord has not spoken to you or some of your loved ones. Listen, he's got everything in his hand and his right. will. And all, all we can say this morning is, uh, Lord God, please uh, uh, call them into the labor. Call them into the labor. And, uh, and then we can all... Uh, we can all pick grapes in happiness mm -hmm. together, you know? Amen. So anyway, that's our, our, our lesson for today. And I hope that uh, all my whining around and trying to read this and it well, hadn't interfered with the study, but thank you so much for listening to our, our lesson this morning. Come to